In a previous video, I made a pre-regulating power supply, and while it works just fine and it can handle loads up to 1 amp, testing it can be a bit tedious. You would need several different power resistors to test the supply like this, not to mention the calculations you would need to run to ensure you pick the correct resistor so that you get the correct results. Isn't there an easier way to simulate a load so that we can more easily test power supplies? Well, yes. In this video, I will show you how to create an adjustable load which allows you to specify just how much current you would draw from a voltage source. Let's start by reviewing the slow method of testing power supplies. You would first pick a voltage on the supply and then determine the expected output based on your design and Ohm's law. For example, if we set the supply to 5 volts, we should expect to get about 33 milliamps with a 150 ohm resistor. And we do. If you don't, then something is wrong with your supply. What about 5 volts with a 10 ohm resistor? We get about 500 milliamps, and so on and so forth. This process works just perfectly fine, the only problem is it's quite a hassle dealing with all these power resistors. But how can we create a variable resistance? The first thing that comes to mind are potentiometers, and yes, they do technically work. The only problem with them is that they oftentimes cannot handle the load that we need to test. For example, if we ran the supply at 5 volts and set the potentiometer to 5 ohms, we would get 1 amp with a power loss of 5 watts. This is much higher than what many potentiometers can handle, and it gets even worse with higher voltages and currents. So you could try to find a power potentiometer, but there are better options available for setting our load. Another option is to use a transistor of some sort, with which we can drop a certain amount of voltage, leading to a certain amount of current. We could use a BJT, such as the 2N3904, to drop the voltage for us. It would be set up in a voltage follower configuration, and the bottom resistor would control the current based on that voltage setting. However, the 2N3904 has a maximum current of 200 milliamps, which I do plan to exceed. The other more convenient option is to just use a MOSFET. That isn't to say that you can't use a BJT, just make sure that you pick your parts correctly, that's all. To really make use of the MOSFET, we can use op amps. If you have watched my previous video about op amps, you will remember that op amps will do anything to keep their inputs equal. Let's imagine for a second a black box where the current flowing through it will generate a voltage feedback to the op amp, which will maintain that same current as compared to the setting made from an adjustable voltage divider. Now let's actually design and make this black box. Let's start with the first step, which is generating a voltage based on the current flowing. The easiest way to do that is with a current sense resistor. This resistor will generate a voltage based on its current. You will use Ohm's law here, by the way. We should pick a small resistor for this purpose to minimize the effect that it has on the circuit. So I chose a 100 milliohm resistor. This will create a voltage drop that is one tenth of the current flowing through it. Now that we have the voltage drop, we just need a way to measure it. We can use another op amp for this purpose. Since we need two op amps in total, I chose the LM35A IC, which has two op amps inside. Also keep in mind that the circuit will use a separate 9 volt power supply. Anyways, to measure the drop, we will use the differential amplifier configuration. I go into more detail in my op amp video, but the basic idea is that the differential amplifier outputs the voltage difference between the two points, exactly what we said we need to measure. Since the resistor is small, the voltage drop that it generates will be small as well. That's why we need to amplify the difference to match with our voltage divider's range. We will be using a voltage divider range of 0 to 9 volts, so our differential amplifier's output should be in that range. The current should be between 0 and 2 amps as well. Keeping those values in mind, we can select a resistor for our feedback to get a specific amplification, using 1K for the other resistors. The gain equation for our differential amplifier is the feedback resistor divided by the input resistor. We need to equate our maximum current, which is 2 amps, to our maximum voltage setting, which is 9 volts. So when 2 amps are flowing, we need to get 9 volts out. With 2 amps, we will get a voltage drop of 0.2 volts. We need to multiply 0.2 by 45 to get 9 volts. So we will need to use a resistor that is 45 times larger than the 1K input resistor, which equates to 45K. As a side note, make sure you put on a suitable heatsink so that the MOSFET doesn't burn itself out. You can watch my previous video on heatsinks if you want some more information. Anyways, let's give it a quick test on the power supply. 
As we can see, we can dynamically adjust the curtain draw until the supply shuts off. The only thing to do now is to solder it together and make it a permanent tool that we can use. After selecting a perf board, I soldered it all together. I'd say that this is a very useful tool, and I really do recommend that you make one as well if you plan on making and testing your own power supply. There are some potential improvements that we can make, such as a constant power mode, but I will leave that for a future video. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing so you can see the other videos that I make. Have a good one.